Welcome back to 65 Drums, my name's Justin. Today we're taking a look at the drummer for the weekend, Ricky Lewis. I want to cover his many drum sets he's had over the years, with a focus on how he uses electronic drums to match the album's sound live on stage. So let's begin where it all started. Ricky Lewis was born into a family of musicians in Toronto, Canada. He gravitated towards learning the drums and was heavily influenced in that by his older brother, who was also a well-known drummer. He got to start playing lots of bar gigs, taking different opportunities to play for artists on his way up. In 2011, Ricky was deep in that musician grind, when a friend of his let him know about an opportunity. This guy was playing guitar for a new artist called The Weeknd. His very first album, House of Balloons, had just dropped a couple of months before, and they were looking for a drummer. My friend gave me the music. I basically studied it, showed up to rehearsals with them, and that rehearsal process is basically where I first met Abel. House of Balloons was getting a lot of buzz in the music community. Within months, Abel was already collaborating with Drake on his second album. Ricky Lewis nailed the audition and hit the ground running with The Weeknd as their original drummer. He had no idea what he was in for. In 2011, The Weeknd's sound was pretty different from what we hear from him now. Translating that drum style and tone to concerts is always a challenge for a drummer. There were no acoustic drums in those early albums. They were all programmed. When asked about his approach, here's what Ricky had to say. I had to find a way to balance between electronic and acoustic, so the samples, all different important parts of Abel's music, and the actual acoustic kit. It's basically like finding ways to blend them together. I had a very small minimal pad, like a Roland SPDS, that I would use for a lot of different samples and stuff like that back then. I guess over time, just like the way The weekend's music works, it kind of drew me more into the world of electronics and finding different ways to bring those same songs to life. He did switch away from the Roland SPDS to a Yamaha Multi-12 sample pad in 2012. This gave him a few more zones to work with. Now moving over to the acoustic side of things, around 2011-2012, it looks like he was playing a mix of Zildjian K's and Sabian cymbals from the AEX and HHX lines. Now for the drums, this is a bit tricky. He played a couple of different shell packs in 2011 and 2012. There was this black shell pack, which just may have been a studio kit, and there was this shell pack in a more natural finish. But from what I can tell, this red one is his primary set that he would end up playing long term. He covered up the logo, but the 65 Drums community thinks that it's probably a Maple Thomas Star Classic from the 1990s. His drum head of choice, then and now, is Evans, and he used a Pearl Demonator kick drum pedal. In 2013, The Weeknd did a tour of Europe. He was playing with this shell pack, which I believe was rented for the trip. My guess is that he brought his own snare with him though. It's a really deep shell with a secondary raised wood rim. The matching snare that came with the shell pack became the side snare. He stuck with Sabian cymbals and included this really cool chopper cymbal on the right hand side of the kit. Now when the tour was over, he went back to his regular drum set, but he started making lots of improvements. With the help of Chris from Los Angeles Drum Services, he now had a really interesting drum rack that curved over the front of his kick drum and one of the strangest snare drum stands I've ever seen. This was all designed to be very easy for his drum tech to set up and tear down. The Pearl Demonator pedal was out, and a Tama Iron Cobra was in. We also got some official specs on the drum set from the Tama website. The finish is Crimson Sky Blaze with black nickel hardware. This includes an 18x22 kick drum, a 7x13 SLPG maple snare drum, an 8x10 tom, a 9x12 tom, and a 14x16 floor tom. And as a side note, this is the drum set that he used on Jimmy Fallon. Now for the electronics, he was using a Yamaha Multi-12 for the Europe tour, but on his regular kit, he upgraded to a Roland SPD-SX. And he started adding lots of mesh pads around the drum set. Here you can see something like a couple of Roland PDX-100s and a Roland PD-80R. But then he thought, why not just create a wall of mesh pads on one side of the kit? When I first started playing with Abel, we did the Kissland tour. I had these huge PD-85-like rolling pads. It was so fun to play because it looked like an electronic drum set on the side. But at the same time, it was so difficult to play something like Belong to the World and then have the switch to literally jump on the other side of the drum set and play High for This or something. I had to develop ways to streamline my approach to getting to each song. So by the fall tour of 2013, he was using six mesh pads positioned all around his drum set and two Roland SPD-SX sample pads, one on each side of the drum set. Each of them had a grid of glow tape so you could see what the heck he was doing. Trying to hit these tiny little zones in the dark can be very challenging. Moving ahead to 2014, the kit was still fairly similar, but the positioning was a little bit different. He found that positioning the pads around the kit instead of just on one side made it a little bit easier to transition between songs. In 2015, he was playing a lot of different drum sets. 
all of them Tama of course. He had his regular red touring drum set, but in addition he had this pile of other drums. He played a drum set in black, he played another drum set in black, but this time with a really thin stripe in the middle. He played one with like a walnut sort of finish to it. He also played an all white Tama kit, and my personal favorite, this really cool blue stripe one. The Weeknd did a ton of TV appearances this year, so my guess is that the band had an agreement with each venue to provide a Tama shell pack for them. Sometimes you don't want to have to pay to ship an entire drum set. It looked like he scaled back how many extra mesh pads he was using, and instead relied more on the two Roland SPDSXs. But he was still using them. On this set you'll see what looks like a Roland PDX100 and a higher end pad from the Roland TD30KV series. Ricky described the current state of his electronic drum integration for an interview. For my tour setup, I have two Roland SPDSXs. The one on my left side I have for all the main samples. Then there are certain songs that are strictly sample bass. For instance, the verse for The Hills. There are these hi-hats, closed and open hi-hats snares, and bass drums. I'll basically play both parts and songs, like those samples on my left. And then when I go to my acoustic kit, I have triggers connected to it. The SPDSX is for those triggers, and I have a double foot pedal that's set up to the right of my normal pedal that's connected to my bass drum. I use that to trigger all the electronic bass drums so I don't have to turn my body all the way to one side to play any specific parts. Jumping forward to 2016, the setup bounced around again as he used different shell packs. But let's take a look at this unit of a setup. We see the standard stuff, but in addition, he added two Roland BT-1 bar triggers on the left hand side and a rubber Roland PD-8 pad above the kick drum. He was still rocking the Tama drum set, but he added another high tom on the left, bringing the total to five toms. You can see a variety of cymbals from the HHX, AAX, and Vault cymbal lines on this drum set, and at some point he had made a switch over to the Tama Speed Cobras. I personally like the Tama Speed Cobras, but I feel like they were introduced and never really took off in the way that Tama wanted them to. And in case you were wondering what it looks like for a full drum set to be blown off the stage by a strong wind, well, here you go. Moving ahead to 2017 and 2018, his core drum set didn't really change that much. Mainly, he added two extra 12-inch mesh pads to the right and left sides of his drum set, and sometimes a second rubber PD-8 pad as well. By 2017, he'd been touring with The Weeknd for about six years. At this point, he had developed a core drum set that he could either contract or expand depending on the needs of the album. While researching this video, I was trying to find the names of his drum technicians, and at this point it was a dude with the Instagram handle Hey Underpants. But unfortunately, I don't know his real name. He's done work for Nick Jones and Justin Timberlake. Jumping forward to 2019, Ricky didn't change up his drum set at all as far as I can tell, and he barely posted any photos of him drumming. Overall, 2019 was a pretty chill year. But you know what wasn't a chill year? 2020. We all know that COVID lockdowns destroyed the live music industry. I know this firsthand because I was suddenly no longer a stagehand. But as for the weekend, the timing really sucked because they had a brand new album, After Hours. But for most of the year, they couldn't tour off that album because everything was locked down. But while concerts were out of the question, they could do TV appearances. So in late December, we got a look at this kit. The main thing that jumps out at you is the fact that there's some very old, very expensive vintage electronic drum pads. The four in front are from the Simmons SDS-5, the most famous electronic drum set from the 1980s, and it's very expensive. There's a big collector's market for those pads. Meanwhile, the Simmons pad on the left-hand side is from a newer generation, maybe like the Simmons SDS-7 or something like that, and it's not quite as expensive. The only modern piece of electronic equipment is the Roland KT-10 pedal on the floor. That way, he can independently trigger 80s kick drum sounds without having to attach a trigger onto the acoustic bass drum. And over here, you can see him with a complete Simmons drum set in white. The weekend was really leaning into that retro drum sound, and this aesthetic made sense for that. Now, I personally love the look, but it is a massive step down in the overall feel from the mesh pads he was just playing. When I was making my History of Electronic Drums documentary series, I went out and bought all kinds of pads from this era. And it turns out, they freaking hurt even if you just play them for two weeks. 
Now moving ahead to 2021, this was a year between two albums. So you would expect, because there's no brand new album, that the drum set would probably just stay locked in. But instead, Ricky made a massive change. Tama was out and Pearl was in. Early this year, I had the honor of playing the Super Bowl. And with a gig like that comes a massive amount of responsibilities and a whole bunch of things you have to focus in on aside from music. So while we were rehearsing, as I expected, things changed. The arrangements changed, the song orders changed, just everything just started to kind of just happen in different places. So I was stressed. I needed new drums. I needed more drums. I even needed a different color. So I called the rep, got him on the phone. We had a great conversation. And within a couple of days, I had new drums. And that's the type of company that Pearl is. They're there for you. They're dependable. They lifted that weight off of my shoulders. So here's what the kit was made of. The shells were all Pearl Music City custom reference pure pack shells. That is a very long name and there's a lot going on here. The kick drum was 22 by 18. He's got toms that are 10 by 7, 12 by 8, 16 by 16, 18 by 16, and 20 by 14 for the gong drum. For snare drums, he's got a 13 by 6.5 reference snare drum, which by the way, costs $822. And his second snare drum was a 14 by 6.5 hybrid exotic. All the hardware was also Pearl. It's an icon rack system. Really, really heavy duty stuff. Now for the cymbals, he was using a set of Sabian graphic cymbals. They come in a bunch of different looks that are applied to the HHX, AAX, and Evolution cymbal lines. And interestingly enough, the cymbals are very similar to what were used on the 2020 Super Bowl performance played by Brian Fraser Moore. Coincidentally, Brian was a big inspiration to Ricky on how he approaches using electronic drums. And apparently, they became friends after Ricky joined Pearl. Brian appears to be the go-to guy in professional drum circles. Whenever I hear people bring him up, it's always about how he uses electronic drums. Ricky was using four Simmons SDS-5 pads on this drum set, but it seems like he noticed how much they hurt to play on, because if you look really closely at the photos, the playing surface is raised. So if I had to take a wild guess, I would say that the drum technician bought a huge sheet of rubber, something like a mouse pad type of material, and cut it to size for each of the Simmons drum pads. But in addition to the Simmons pads, he now started bringing Roland drums back into the equation. Roland was really pushing their VAD drums at this time. So Ricky's set had a PDA 100 MS and a PDA 120 MS. He was also using a Roland SPDSX and now a Roland TD50 module. Ricky Lewis also posted some footage of him just playing a pure Simmons drum set in 2021 as well. Jumping forward to 2022, there was a brand new album. It turns out the entire tour got delayed, so I had to wait around till May to actually see what this year's drum set would end up looking like. And here it is. The core setup is still there because when Pearl sends you like 10 grand worth of shells, you don't just throw it away and get a whole new drum set every single time. So he's happy with the switch to Pearl. The mix of cymbals is very similar to what he's used before. The only change I see is that I don't really see the printed pattern on top. So these are probably his older cymbals that don't have that special sort of design on them. Now, when it comes to the electronic drums, there's a lot going on here. For starters, I think I counted eight different Roland RT30 triggers. There's one on the kick drum, there's one on the snare, there's one on the side snare, all the toms have it, and the mounted kick drum. He also has five Simmons pads, and then if you look at the floor, you'll see two Roland pedals, the KT10s. Now with all these different electronic components, you would expect that he was still using a TD50X module, but instead he switched over to a different kind of module, the Roland TM6 Pro. A lot of people don't realize that Roland has two completely different lines of drum modules depending on the situation. The TD series of drum modules is meant for complete electronic drum sets. And they have a second line of modules called the TM series. So the TM2 and the TM6. This is meant for hybrid drummers that don't want to plug in electronic cymbals and hi-hats and all this stuff. They just want to plug in a couple of triggers, a couple of extra mesh pads to combine with their acoustic drum set. But the problem is that the TM6 only has six inputs. So that means he has to use two of them, as you can see on this drum set. That still leaves him a couple of inputs short, but maybe he's using cable splitters or maybe some of those triggers aren't actually actively being used. If I had to make a guess, I think he's going to simplify. This looks like an experimental sort of setup of electronics. And I'm gonna guess he's probably gonna also use his sample pad that's probably coming back. We don't know what the final setup will actually be like. And because I'm not from the future, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it. Have an awesome day. See you all in a few. And if you're going to NAM, like I'll literally see you in a few. If you happen to bump into me, be sure to say hi.